child it was in my childhood day oh lord a many many long years ago my name is Barbara Moore and I'm with the Glenwood Working Partnership Historical Committee and I, we're here today to talk with Mrs. Margaret K. Lewis and the K stands for Kennedy, I understand. I'm Margaret Lewis. I don't put the K in okay. when I give my name, but <laughs> I have to sign my checks that way, so I, it is Margaret K. Lewis, but um, I've been here since 1944. I believe it was March that I came in 1944. My husband was in World War II. Back then we had a draft board and he was drafted. And I was teaching school when he was drafted. And I had taught for four years, I believe, when I came here. But in the meantime, I was pregnant, so I could not teach in the state of Florida when you were pregnant. So my parents had moved to Panama City from Jackson County. I was raised in Malone. You may know about the basketball team, but that's, <laughs> it's still going. And it was going when I went to high school there and I graduated in 1935. But um, I came here because my parents were here and they just said they would let me stay till the war was over. So I felt like that was good since I couldn't work. What did you find when you moved to Panama City? Well, it was not like it is today. <laughs> In the first place, there were no condominiums on the beach. <laughs> I mean, not that were 15 stories high. Mm -hmm. So. It was pretty, um, it was beautiful. You could just go out and run in the sand most any place. I have realized that all downtown was downtown. There was no mall. And um, some of the streets were not paved. And I had bought a house. <laughs> Somebody that didn't have a job bought a house <laughs> over on MacArthur. They were selling those houses. It cost $4,800. And all I had to do was save up 250 down. So I saved up 250 because the government sent me $50 to live on mm. during the World War II. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I had $250, so I had bought a house over on MacArthur. But our house was next to the last house on the street. The rest was woods. All of the cove was. Mm -hmm. So you've woods. seen quite a few changes. Um, yes, it's land-wise, as far as Panama City is concerned. And it's got solid houses now. Your background, your education, your training has been in the field of education. Tell us yeah. about that. How did you get involved in it? Well, back when I graduated from high school in 1935. There was not much choice that girls had. They could be nurses or teachers. Mm -hmm. And um, FSCW, which was Florida State College for Women, and Gainesville was university, but it was for men only. And so I chose to go to FSCW and major in education, mm -hmm. so that's what I did mm -hmm. for those four years. And when I got out in 1939, I was looking for a job, and that was almost as hard as it is to find one now. Mm -hmm. So the first job I got was down on the Swanee River in a little town called O'Brien. Mm -hmm. And they had just built a new school building. It was a brick school building. But it didn't have indoor plumbing. Oh. <laughs> that old, 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 old edge. But no just, indoor plumbing. <laughs> that's right. But the strange thing is, they did have a lunchroom because 
all the farmers around there would bring in their vegetables and they'd cook the vegetables and we, for 25 cents. Mm -hmm. We could all eat. Okay. So <laughs> it wasn't all bad. <laughs> and so I taught there for a couple of years and then I transferred to Live Oak, which was a bigger place, and taught high school English. Um, by that time, Uncle Sam was calling my husband. Mm -hmm. So once he um, got his registration, he was registered for 1A. That meant you were leaving immediately. Mm -hmm. And then we got married. Back in World War II, you couldn't give any information out. He just told me if he came in to town that night, he hadn't gone. If he didn't come, then he'd gone. So that's the way I was supposed to know when they had left, because they said, what, loose lips sink <laughs> ships. <laughs> so after he left, and I started following him around was when my parents moved over here. Well, you told me this very interesting story about how you got into education, especially in the area that you did. When I was growing up, there were no, uh, I guess there were, but you didn't see them, no handicapped, uh, special need kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when I was a child, I may have seen a uh, one down syndrome. Mm -hmm. But she was, at that time, they, it was a boy, but he was in a playpen and it was a neighbor's house, but we didn't know it was there, but I went in with the children and we were playing with the other children and um, they called them Mongolian idiots, mm -hmm. was what they were called then. Mm -hmm. I really was got kind of interested in it in 19, 49, when our uh, church, First United Methodist Church here, uh, had a, transferred a pastor here that had a child that was about a little over a year old. He and my son were about the same age. And um, he, he could uh, walk, but he couldn't talk and they had taken him to Mayo Clinic and had tried to get a diagnosis and they ran tests and said he was, um, had calcium deposits on his brain, but that's it. Mm -hmm. And there was no training programs or anything. President Kennedy's family had a he had a sister that was uh, disabled. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they were very interested in that. So in the 1950s, everybody began to question a lot of this and wonder what. And when he became president, that's one thing he started doing, is trying to see that, well, the old the old law that was passed was the 94-142, but it's now IDEA. That law was passed that schools were going to have to gear up to uh, help the kids that were in need. 1950s, these parents in Bay County really got interested in trying to get their children some help at the schools. And I, Tommy Smith was the um, superintendent and I think they all went down and talked to him to see if he could uh, start something. Of course the state had no uh, exceptional ed uh, program requirements or anything at that time. Mm -hmm. So he decided just on his own I guess to try starting a place for uh, the children of these parents. So they started one in what was, uh, it was Panama Grandma. And so they just got somebody that would agree to do it, you know. So I think they had about three teachers while they were there. <laughs> and then the church sold it, so they had to move out. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime, they had, there was a group of parents in Lynn Haven that had 
were interested, but they didn't want to have anything to do with the school because they didn't trust the school to hold out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they had gotten a grant and had done something in uh, Lynn Haven, and they were in old, the last building that was standing for the old Bob Jones College. When you, when you started, how large was the class that you were working? I think I had about 10. Had no, no program or anything. There was a, some information from a Dr. Sam Kirk, who was at the University of Illinois. And he had been interested in this and had done some work on it. So I was able to scrounge that around. You had to really develop quite a bit of the curriculum on your own. We just played it by ear. Mm -hmm. And the kids, well, there were certain things you'd try to see. And uh, thank goodness, we uh, Bay County did have a psychologist mm -hmm. and we could get some testing done. You never, you never quit learning yourself. These kids, their children taught me more than I taught them to be patient. We like to have things done immediately and it takes them a little longer. And they had four classrooms. We thought that would be sufficient for ever. I don't know what we were thinking. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't long until it was full. On the average, uh, how many students uh, yearly would that school provide or have for now? Uh, we have uh, around 150. At first, we only took them at first grade. but And then we didn't have kindergarten because the state didn't have kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we have added that as we go along. What year was the school named after you? Oh, it was when that new part of the building was finished. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the parents had been to, out to the uh, school board and they had a regulation that you couldn't name anybody for it if they were still living. So they went out and had the school board change it, I guess. I don't know what they did. I had nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. We were thinking about changing the name because it had been uh, called Oak Grove Center for Trainable. Mm -hmm. And we had some kids, because we had some um, kids that were autistic. Mm -hmm. And um, so we didn't want to just say it was limited to that. Mm -hmm. So I knew we were trying to change the name, mm -hmm. but I didn't know they had changed it to my name. And I thought, how can I stay here and work? <laughs> I said, I can't even answer the phone because <laughs> I'm not going to say, say my name when I answer the phone. So anyway, I made it for th three more years till I retired in 19. 83. The impact that you've had on this community uh, from an educational standpoint has to um, spread not only in Bay County but throughout the state of Florida. I couldn't have done anything unless I had a group of people working with the children. Exactly. Because it was, and it's mostly if anybody works with them, it's somebody that wants to. Mrs. Woods, would you mind tell, giving us your age? I said if I lived till Easter Sunday, it's never been on Easter Sunday, I don't think. Uh -huh. But if I live till then, that'll be the 20th of April and I will be 96. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm.